eight, and we've got a guest coming on today onto the Lauren Hull Glory Show. And uh, the name of the lovely this lovely lady is Myra Duckworth. And when I think of Duckworth, of course I think of Vera, Vera Duckworth on Coronation Street. You can see she's laughing. <laughs> so just very quickly, I'm going to tell you again a little bit about Myra. Myra's going to come on and do some shows here on Moving On TV. She's going to be a new presenter. I'm really looking forward to that. And um, I'm just going to read a little bit of what she's done in, in her life, some of what she's done. She's a quali qualified as a teacher in 1994. She's a certified life coach and master level three Reiki healer, <laughs> like the rest of us. I'm also a self-confirmed spiritual whisperer and life path guide. I wonder what I know what a horse whisper is, but let's see what a spiritual whisper is. She's a self-published author. She's appeared on TV several times over the past 15 years, so we need to find out about that. She's been a lay pastor, and currently she's a full-time autism mother, and she hosts two 10-birth caravans by the coast on Clacton on Sea. She's just starting her newest project, which is called the Dijanga Project which is all about free thinkers managing their own lifestyle. And that is exactly what we do here on Moving On TV. As you know, you, uh, I'm sorry, starting to talk like Bo Jiden there, you know what I mean? Yeah. Sorry about that. That just crept in. Smile. It gives you dimples. Right? If you're coming on to Moving On TV lately, you can see that I am focusing on this logo, Smile. Because there was such a lot of bullying going on and trolling and God knows what, I decided to turn it around. So smile, it gives you dimples. And we are on anti-bullying month. Smile, it gives you dimples. There you go. And anti-bullying month, all month here. I'm moving on TV. I might go on all year if I feel like it. Anti-bullying month, non-stop anti-bullying. Okay, so we've got two minutes to go and then I'm going to bring on Myra. So welcome to Moving On TV if you're joining us. Please come on board Moving On TV. I'm looking for loads of hosts to host your own show. In the meantime, uh, just very quickly, uh, I'm just going to tell you that today was all about being your unique self. Okay, that's the card we pulled. Card number 20, be your unique self. In order to feel good in life, you have to find a way to be yourself. And God knows I've, I did this today, singing as Janice Joplin and singing as Maria Callas, right? Lauren did that, how to stay sane in a crazy world. These are the cards that I channeled, right? So Myra definitely lives as her unique self, as I do. And so I thought it would be really cool to interview her before she actually comes on as a presenter to tell us a little bit about her life, as I've told you a little bit, a little bit to talk a little bit about these things that she's done and about her life in the present, and also about the program that she's going to be presenting here on Moving On TV. So welcome to Moving On TV. Today it's Blondie. <laughs> I've been in my time machine, <laughs> as everyone can see and jump back 30 years of my life. So here we go. Welcome to Moving On TV, the lovely Myra Duckworth. Hello. Hi, Myra. Hi. Oh, it's lovely to be a part of your show. Thank you so much for having me. You're welcome. You're welcome. It's lovely to have you here. So are you living in Clacton at the moment? No, we're still in Birmingham. Um, oh yeah, I can hear yes, that. So we, I'm a Brummy born and bred, even though yes. I do try to hide the accent, it does slip out occasionally. Yes. <laughs> but we've I just think... we've just Sorry. bought two we've just bought two um ten birth caravans down on St. Othys Beach, Clacton on Sea, about a year ago. Okay, and that's where you're living at the moment. No, we still live in Birmingham. We just oh, sorry, sorry. sorry yeah. let me get my focus on you're living in Birmingham but you just bought those two caravans on Clacton on Sea right yeah. um yeah. okay and uh I've got so much info I've got lovely information here about you 
I mean, I'm also a master level uh, Reiki healer and a life coach. Learning to pull this great work. I think we all are. <laughs> um, but what stands out to me here is a spiritual whisper. Now, I've, I've done a lot of work and I've mixed with a lot of people, but I've never heard of a spiritual whisperer. So can you explain to us what is actually a spiritual whisperer? Okay, well, you, you were very close when you talked about a horse whisperer. And when I had my first child, I used to watch quite a few shows and read books by, I can't remember the lady's name now, but she was called the Baby Whisperer. I don't know if you've ever heard of her. So spiritual whispering is along that same line. Um, it's I was kind of doing the work anyway, but didn't know what it was called. I had a dream. And in the dream, it gave me that name. So I kind of made that name up. That's probably why you can't find it. <laughs> Came to me in the dream. Um, so basically, it's in the same vein as horse whispering, baby whispering, spiritual whispering is, is how can I describe it? I would say it's um, while I'm life coaching, I'm very aware of what the person isn't actually saying. And it's almost like I can hear another level of, of communication from them so their 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 mouths are saying one thing their body language is saying something else but then there's a third level that i'm picking up that they're not saying and i'm sure people who who practice clairvoyancy or mediumship of will understand probably a bit better what i mean <laughs> i totally get what you're saying i understand what you're saying so you're working because obviously because i've done coaching and um but when you're working with someone you use your intuition and you have to tune Absolutely. in exactly to what's going on inside of them as a holistic Absolutely. being in order to be able to help them in the first place Absolutely. So, um, okay so you got this in a dream yes. and it's your own actual creation spiritual whisper exactly as i say because the, phrase. Not, the term yes. <laughs> okay Okay, so um, I like to go back a bit whenever I'm interviewing my guests um, to find out a little bit more of where did this all start. So where were you born? Um, how was your childhood in terms of your psychic abilities? Were you a very sensitive child or did you come into these gifts when you got older? So would you like to tell us a little bit about that? I'm going to mute or else I'll talk forever. <laughs> <laughs> so um yes i'm born and bred in birmingham um i didn't know actually that i had a gift necessarily i would never have called it a gift i still don't really call it a gift i think everybody is intuitive to some degree um i I, I must say, and I might offend some people, and I might I don't intend to offend anybody, but I do feel that women are slightly more intuitive maybe than men. Not because we are special, but maybe because we we tap into it maybe more than men do. Um, so I would say it's more intuitive. Um, I found that as a child, maybe I didn't really fit in. Um, was always questioning adults, questioning authority. Um, my mum always described me as being quite cheeky. Um, I was, was told I had an answer for everything. Um, <laughs> and now that I'm older, I actually take that as a compliment. <laughs> actually, I do. But if I don't have the answer, I, I, will, I will say I don't know and I will research and investigate it. Um, so, yes, I think as a child, I would be described as a tinkerer. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with um, Tinkerbell from Peter Pan. She, she's a tinker, isn't she? And I think uh, that's how I would describe myself as a child. I was a tinker. I liked to take things apart, see how they worked, and then challenge myself to put them back together. If something was broken or discarded, I'd be the one to kind of say, I can fix it. And I would open it up, see how it worked, put it back together. Um, and was just always kind of interfering with stuff really i was quite nosy and i liked to find out what was going on that's how i described my early childhood <laughs> wow you, you know what you sound a little bit like me that way because uh, what i used to do I, I i didn't actually take things apart i loved it i did like collecting lots of things and i remember i used to go around collecting flowers and 
and always looking and trying to figure out, you know, what's inside them, trying to understand, you know, when I was really young. And um, I always used to have, do you remember, I don't know if you remember the comics, we used to have like um, Bounty and you used to have these um, little cutout dolls and you could cut them yes. out, cut out all these different little clothes and put them um, on yeah, and it's all yeah. so creative, always looking and asking like you and trying to figure stuff out. Like you said, and I, I remember also going back to probably when I was probably about four years old, um, I was born in Ireland and um, my family took me to Israel when I was seven, big story. But mm -hmm. um, I remember sitting, looking at uh, the, the old heaters, the ones where they had like orange, it was like, um, Oh, you know what I mean? Like a rectangle kind of shape. Is that rectangle? Mm -hmm. And it, you turn, it, they were electric and you could see this orange. And I would sit there gazing into it and right. I could see everything. I could see shows going on. And, and, and it was always like that for me. Very, very creative, very, very visual. So, you know, we have these gifts from, you know, from when we're more or less born. Mm -hmm. Born? Born? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> born. I'm sorry, I don't know what's going on with my language at the moment. We're more or less born. So, so, um, okay. So, what, how did you envision your life? I mean, when you were at school, what, what was it that you actually did originally, like a job, for example? So, my first like job was actually teaching. I did go into teaching um, and teaching was what I wanted to do from maybe five years old. That's the earliest memory I can have of it. And I would put my toys in front of me and I would sit there with my legs crossed and I would have a book and I would be reading the story to the toys and telling them to shush and sit nicely and oh, well done, you're listening carefully. So I think teaching is always one Better behaved. Um, and so, yes, I did go into teaching and, you know, it's 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 sad to say, but I, I feel that the the red tape, the bureaucracy, the, the politics of teaching, you know, it kind of wore me down in the end. And I just felt like I wasn't able to spend my time teaching the kids, engaging them, helping them, listening to them. I wasn't able to do that. There wasn't time to do it. It was just like it was a conveyor belt and we just had to get the work done and and, and you know, get the results and you know, but I'm 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 a I'm an empath and I'm a feeler. And if a child's got a problem, I want to find out what that problem is and help them. I don't want to just say, you know, oh, you got five out of ten and, and move them on. I want to help them get the other five right as well. And the system doesn't really allow for that. I found that the education system was just a little bit archaic. It hasn't changed much since I was at school. Um I feel like, you know, the kids don't get a chance to really be themselves. Occasionally we would have, for example, um, a non-uniform day and the way the children were dressed on non-uniform day really showed their individuality and their personality. And I just felt it's a shame that it, it couldn't be non-uniform day every day. <laughs> Yes, yeah, so, I'm, yeah. I'm doing. I'm doing all the jobs at the moment. It's just oh. myself, so I'm just sending stuff, telling people if they want to get more interviews, to subscribe on YouTube uh, yes. to move yes. on TV mental health. Exactly. You see, every child uniforms really they don't yeah. work. I mean, every child is unique, and that's the problem with the way that children have been brought up. In they've been brought up to believe that they're not. That's they right. believe you know there's something wrong with them if they're creative or they're different or you yes. know children are unique every single being is unique every single being is unique and um, but the unfortunate system that you know that is coming to an end and is collapsing thank god is is where everyone was put into a box like you've all got to do this like you said to teach to teach if, like if you take a mother and she's teaching their child or a teacher is teaching their child, they can teach in a certain way. They can have their own set of rules to match that child. Now, coming into that's really interesting because I want to lead that into the fact that you have um, a child who's autistic. I have three that children right? that are autistic. <laughs> three. Three yes, children. Yes, all three of my autistic. children, yes. 
Oh my goodness. That is a lot to do with Cara. I don't know if Cara's still on here, but that is weird synchronicity because Cara's daughter Tyra is autistic. Wow. You wow. See, How do you do it? I mean, are you a single mom or do you have a partner? Um, I have a husband, a very lovely husband, right. very hands on, very helpful. And, um, you know, autism is, is quite a wide spectrum. Um, and uh, when I say fortunately, my children are able and capable, it's not to say that it's unfortunate when children aren't. But what I'm trying to say is that it makes my life that little bit easier because I do know children who have autism who are nonverbal and do struggle with, you know, the very basics okay. of, of life. Um, and my children aren't at, at that end of the spectrum. They're at the higher end. The more able, end, I should say. The more right. able. Because I know, able. this is the thing, is I know that Tyra isn't. I mm -hmm. think she's five years old now, and I know that Cara's a single mom. She's in Ireland and she struggles a lot with Tyra. And but so it's always very good, you know, if you for a parent who's dealing with autism to be able to offer more suggestions. That might be an idea that we might be on TV. Yes, is, uh, that. As we said, every child is unique and they have to have a, a direct approach. Mm -hmm. So how do you do it? I mean, you say that your your husband is very much hands on and he supports you. Um, how old are your children? My daughter, my oldest daughter is seventeen now, and my son is fifteen, and my youngest one is nine. Wow! Oh yeah. my goodness! So they okay. So you've got two teenagers, and and someone is coming closer and closer to their teens. Um, yes. Wow. So you must be, how do you do it? Do you have a sense of humor? Do you have a spiritual practice? Because Both. come on, I mean, as it is, it's, it's it would be practically impossible for a parent to deal with three kids that age anyway, but with also with special needs, because they have got extra special needs. Mm -hmm. how, how do you do it? <laughs> do you do it? Um, I think it's interesting that you asked that after I talked about the spiritual whispering, and I think it's the spiritual whispering that helps me with them. So I think it's all about perspective as well. You know, when my children are, well, or were, you know, we don't have the problems we had when they were younger now because we've learned to deal with it. We've learned to avoid certain things. We've learned to compensate for certain things. And so all the battles that we had when they were smaller, we don't have now. You know, they're just not an issue anymore. But um, I think with the spiritual whispering, I have to really listen to my children and feel what they're feeling. You know, when before I knew they were all sick, I would think, oh, they're naughty or they're procrastinating and it's a problem. But now I understand that they're it's not naughtiness, it's anxiety or fear or um, uncertainty or attachment. And so, you know, I've just completely flipped how I view their behaviour and be more nurturing, more compassionate, more patient, you know, all those sorts of things. Um think of alternatives you know if my child doesn't like fish fingers i'm not going to battle with them for half an hour to have fish fingers you know they can just eat the mashed potato and beans that's fine then it's not going to kill them i'm not a bad mother because they haven't had their fish fingers do you know what i mean it's all it's all these sorts of things and when you come to that realization everything becomes easier <laughs> sure. sure i mean um well, I'm, try I'm trying to uh, understand this because, like I say, you're lucky because you have a supportive partner, yeah. but then you've got three children. Uh, sometimes people, they, you know, they can't really, they don't have the time and the energy. Mm. But that is, as you said, you've got to be, in order to deal with vulnerable people, and your children are every single one of us is vulnerable, but they are more vulnerable. They're probably star seeds like workers. Absolutely. You know, you know, they, Thank they, you. Um, this vibration. Like, they um, absolutely are. I think um, I was diagnosed with something called borderline personality disorder, and all my work is to prove that it's not a mental health issue at all. And um, autism is actually one of the, um, uh, one of the, um, God, I can't talk today. It's really strange. I can't think of the words I want to say. It's one of the symptoms. One of because with BPD you have everything. It's like a um, a Woolworths of where you can choose this, that, right. and the other. You know, like pick a mix. Yeah. And I have a bit of autism, 
and I've been accused, I was accused when I was a child, or even with my drama teacher, when I was studying, she said, Lauren, you're not listening to me, you're not looking at me, you're not focused right. on me, and I said, yeah, but I hear everything you say, and I, my, maybe you're just not seeing that I'm picking everything up, but I am different. I'm obviously different. I can't hold down a job. I have to start a TV station. <laughs> yeah, 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 and I'm glad you did. <laughs> I can't hold down a job. I hold down a job. I go to pieces. I, you know. But anyway, coming back to what I'm trying to say here is, so when you're dealing with human beings, every single, as I say, everyone mm -hmm. is vulnerable. And I taught a technique the other day, stop, think, and listen. Mm -hmm. to assess what's going on with that person in order to be able to help them. Mm -hmm. So I presume you use the whole mind, body, spirit, like mm -hmm. you said, and probably nutrition and everything that's out there because there's everything out there and your Reiki skills mm -hmm. in order to be able to calm them down, in order to be able to help them. Because, I mean, how would you say your kids are dealing at the moment with the chaos in the world? Without going into politics, because we can't do that on here. Yes, I it is a very scary times, and I'd say a lot of children are going to end up with post-traumatic stress um, because of what's going on. So, how do you deal with that? How you know? I do you feel that that each one of them needs a different approach, or can you deal with them as as a collective, as a family? Yes, we do both. So we we manage our family as collective and i give them individual time as well um i was a single mom for for five years actually with my older two before i met um my second husband so i do know what it's like to be a single mom with with autistic children um so yes they're very different but in terms of what's recently happened my children were very um they found it difficult in social situations anyway so they weren't they didn't struggle with the whole lockdown situation they were more than happy to be at home with me 24 hours a day and i stopped working when my son got his diagnosis i stopped teaching at that point um and i've just been doing things like yourself i find it difficult to hold down a job i can't take all the politics and the drama and the bad energy and all that sort of stuff it, it winds me up it makes me angry so i tend to just move from job to job until i find what i'm comfortable with um so that's why i do the online life coaching now um so yeah my kids my kids haven't really been affected by it they they find social situations challenging they found the school environment very um hostile i think is the word um, so I homeschooled my children before lockdown even happened. My children were already being homeschooled. The little one was still going into school, but my older two are being homeschooled already. I won't right. do anything, Lauren, that, that causes my children any mental health distress. As soon as it causes them distress, I'm out. Sure, sure. So now sure. my daughter is in college. She's doing very, very well. My son is in an elected home education programme. That's for children who have been pulled out of school but they just go in part time and at the moment my youngest one is kind of flexible with school if she can go in I let her go in if she can't cope she stays home. that's amazing you've created <laughs> a safe atmosphere for them you know that's, that's exactly awesome. what they need and and yeah. love yeah. love is the most important thing when the child Absolutely. feels safe then yes. they can function they can thrive and and yeah. to want to actually be at home with mom that's a compliment, I would have thought, when you come to it see is. their age. <laughs> it is, absolutely. Yeah, so we were very fortunate, and I understand that. Not everybody has, you know, the capacity to, to be at home or to not work and have that time with their children. So, you know, but there are there are strategies. There's always a way around something. And for me, my children's well-being and mental health was, was paramount. Yeah, of cool. course. Okay, but you also, this is, you, the beautiful thing is that you manage to create a life where you're happy as well. Because yeah. it is, I mean, I try, I mean, yes, don't get me wrong, I'm not a parent. And I can't say, you know, what I do say is people have to love themselves first. And, mm -hmm. um, and then, because if they're not here, if they don't love themselves and they don't nurture themselves and take care of themselves, they're not going to be a good parent in the first place without being aloof because i haven't got a clue how it is to be a parent because i'm not i have two cats <laughs> <You> know, <they're laughs> crazy 
and and they just get on with it. You know, I don't see or hear from them unless they want food uh, or a cup. Yes, you should say. <laughs> but so you have managed the beauty of what you've done here is you've managed to create a life where, which is well rounded, where you also where you feel that you are nurtured and you are supported. And so you can be a better mom, because if you were, was there a time though, Myra, where you felt like it was all kind of falling apart and you didn't know what to do? Yes, I, I don't know that, if you've ever heard of a TV show, show called 10 Years Younger. Have you ever yeah, heard of that show? Yeah, I, I, actually, I actually went on that show. That's one of the shows I did um, okay. two years ago. And I was talking to the TV host and I was telling her, you know, that I've given literally my all to my children. And uh, I had, like you say, I hadn't been looking after myself. I've been putting myself last, you know, spending most of my money on what they wanted so that they wouldn't have meltdowns and perform in stores that they wanted. Um, and yeah, I I let, really did let myself go in in a word. And so I had two weeks in London where they pampered me and they did my hair and makeup and I went shopping and you know just having two weeks break was wonderful. You know, so that that I needed that rest. I think because I'm pretty full on. You know, um, and to be fair, you know it was wonderful. I had all long black hair and it was dyed and it was straightened and my hair used to be like this before I went on the show and I've gone back to this look partially because of lockdown I couldn't get access to any hairdressing um but wigs, my darling wigs I am. It's mine. Wigs. every day I wear a different one people don't know what to expect I've got this one takes me back 30 years it I love it it's all from my life it's I amazing. love it I just love that you can just reinvent yourself every day just how you feel it's wonderful it's a brilliant idea it is it is okay so you were on 10 years younger um and so after that do you feel that you were able to um take back more of your power and to become you know so as i said it's really important for you to be pampered and to feel good about yourself so every single day here i'm moving on tv when i come on i tell people we're doing this smile it gives you dimples yeah, love <laughs> because that. I, it does I, I know i had before but now all i do is smile and there's a magic not only a magic about smiling that it lifts your face and gives you an instant facelift and mm -hmm. gets the wrinkles you know and, um but there is a magic to it and like i've tried it when i've been in my lowest and you just go smile and it's something just shifts yeah it just shifts Very powerful. It's like, it's a very, very powerful action. And if you pay it forward and you smile towards another person, you know, I mean, we're in England. I grew up in, in Israel where everybody would just walk around talking to each other, smiling, hugging, you know, it's a, a natural. Like you probably originally, I'd say your ancestors, where did they come from? My mom's from the beautiful island of Barbados and my dad's from the beautiful island of Jamaica. I visited both islands frequently and it's the very same thing there. You know, people are always smiling, talking. They take the time to stop and, you know, have a conversation in the street. You can talk to each other on the verandas outside well into the night. There's always music playing somewhere. It's wonderful. It's wonderful. Yeah. And, and without me going into politics, just to use a kind of a code, I think the powers to be knew very well when they masked everyone. Oh yeah. The way everyone smile. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that, and they knew what they were doing. Because as I say, um, the smile, yeah, you can smile with your eyes, but you know, sometimes you, you do need this is why God gave us. Yeah. I think we should all go out and draw a, uh, draw a smile on the outside of our masks, shouldn't we? <laughs> <laughs> we could do, that's an idea. Or put a hole in it ever. <laughs> that's the comedy side anyway so coming back to to what we were saying so um i want to move on to so, say yeah the culture here in the uk unfortunately is people don't connect to each other enough and you and i come from backgrounds where as i say it was all hugging and my father used to walk around the tanya well he when he, he was in the wheelchair and walk once he he was very very old he lived to 95 and his carer, Jesse, used to push him in the wheelchair. Every time I'd go over to visit him, 
he'd take me everywhere. This is my daughter. He'd always tell everyone I was a doctor or something like, you know, something like that. And he, he, the, everybody knew me. It's like when I go into the taxi, they say, oh, you're Sid's daughter. <laughs> How's it going in England? And, and I thought, well, how do you know? Or you're singing or you're doing something. He's told us everything. Uh, yeah. Well, he'd take you around and everyone loved him and everyone would be hugging. And it was such a beautiful atmosphere, apart from the fact when, you know, the when people are non-stop in, in threat of war, I think it brings them together, except this time, which it's pushed everyone apart. But again, I, I don't want to go into that. So um, we need to definitely develop more of that love and smiley kind of attitude. And so I was on here till about 5 a.m. in the morning, putting on this logo, Smiley Gives You Dimples, because we had so much bullying I do the opposite <laughs> so it's, and, and getting people to feel good about themselves. But the most important thing is to feel good about themselves first. Absolutely. So you went on to write some books. Mm -hmm. You're a self-published author. So tell us a little bit about your books. Um, um, okay, so I wrote um, a series of books. I haven't quite finished the series, actually. The reason I stopped writing them was because the platform I was using just disappeared overnight. So I've yet to find another platform to continue. But I wrote um, a series of books. I think there's about 10 of them that I wrote, just very short books for preschoolers written in rhyme. And it's all around uh, mental health for young children. Um, anxiety mainly covers things like um, it's it's a, a, a character called Little Gem, like the lettuce. <laughs> but I thought that you know little gems are nice little stories that people tell. So the character is called Little Gem, and she's a little mixed race girl. She's five. She goes to preschool, and it's about just little adventures that she has throughout her day. For example, um, one of them is just just not wanting to eat her peas for dinner she just refuses she doesn't want to eat them because she thinks the peas look like rabbit poo so she won't eat them um so that's quite a fun story and then there's another one about her finding a spider in the bathtub and mum wants to wash the spider down the drain or, or kill it and she she actually rescues the spider she won't let mummy kill it and she puts it out of the window instead <laughs> Well, wow, my creative juices are working here. It would be amazing to have a children's program on here to, to actually Control. read those books. But, you know, when you say mental health, to help children with mental health in, in some way. So using everything that you're writing there, it's just to make, as I said, to make a child feel safe and unique. Absolutely. And, you know, with a little bit of humour so that they... They can understand if a parent can kind of bring themselves down to the level of that child and be a child at heart there's yeah. more chance that they're going to get through to them so yeah. little gem little gem is amazing the, the only thing about youtube is sharing programs about children is not easy on no. youtube so and that's where the majority of our people that watch but we can talk about it we can talk about it yes and we can also you know talk to parents we can you know aim the show at the parent and have it for the child if that makes sense these are things that you could possibly do or, or say to your child yes because i did do a series of programs called buzzy b um which it was um all about loving yourself the child loving themselves i did I got all these characters, little stuffy stuffed toys, and one of them was uh, Ellie the Pink Elephant. Ellie, Ellie, I love my, and she loved herself. She, I love my pink, and I love myself. And as yeah. I say, everything about moving on to me is so innocent. And I've got to keep that innocence because you don't find it anywhere else. That's and right. I made a vow, and I've fallen out. This is why I got bullied a lot, is because I made a vow that nothing will go on moving on TV unless it, you know, unless it actually doesn't need a watershed. Mm -hmm. um, except when I did my truth interviews, I did a big interview yesterday with an actress as well. And it was a bit over the top. Um, the film that she made, I, I couldn't put anything on at all, but she's expressing mm -hmm. her creativity and her mental health 
through, yeah. interesting enough, through nudity, which is, oh, okay. you know, she's very, very brave and she looks stunning. So, you know, and she's very young, but I can't put anything else on except just discussing why yes. she went out of her, her, when she came out of her comfort zone. I've taken pictures. I've taken pictures where nature is covering the top of me, but oh. nature can't cover me. <laughs> it's very brave very, very very freeing and a lot of fun yeah and you'd be surprised how many people how many men have contacted me ever since my daughter was born to <laughs> i could imagine, I yeah, could imagine. Was all over the world but anyway coming back <laughs> coming back so you've done 10 books wow 10 books well that was well, in that series well. i've done other books besides that i also okay. had to, um started a series called brown cherubs urgent brown cherubs urban tales and i was rewriting classic fairy tales and modernizing them oh, kind of yeah what well, do you mean a bit like um once upon a time did you ever see that yes i, did. I watched the whole series i loved oh, it my God. I, really loved it. I thought it was yeah, brilliant so, uh, gold. It, it, oh, God. wasn't it wonderful <laughs> Whoa. And I, I, as I watched it, I was thinking, oh, I should do one about that. I should do a book about this. So, for example, I did a story about Jack and the Beanstalk. I rewrote it and it was called Jack and the Cash Stack. And it's where um, a young boy and his friends um, kind of see a, a neighbourhood drug dealer who lives at the top of the tallest tower on the estate. And um, he kind of hatches a plan of how to get his hands on some of that money because he realises that this... This guy is taking money from from the community, and he wants to get back and 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 give it back to the community. <laughs> wow. So it's all sort of written for for teenagers, and and it's it's with their voice. I got their voices from young people that I used to teach. Okay. So I kind of had different different young people in mind as I was writing it, and it was almost like they were speaking to me. It was very very cool. And then I did okay. a rewrite of Cinderella, and that's called Cindy Ella. And um, yeah, I rewrote that one as well. <laughs> wow, you reminded me here because my create creativity is in music. And yeah, it's when beautiful. I, I heard out... you singing. Sorry to interrupt, but I heard you singing just at the beginning of the show, and it's brilliant. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I'm a trained classical singer. I I I toured wow. with Peter Biaf and Maria Callas, and but when I was about, I I've, I've written musicals when I was 13 years old. Oh um, man, I rewrote Cinderella. Oh, there you go. I rewrote it. I recorded the songs on my accordion. I've been producing musicals since I was 13 years old. We put it on the balcony. I, I think I was Cinderella, of course. And my yeah. sister was the fairy godmother. But, you know, it's really interesting. When you look at fairy tales, they're, they're very, very fascinating when you watch the, how they created a black and white society. Do you mm -hmm. know what I mean? Yeah. Like the fairy godmother is so, so kind and loving. And, and the witch is so evil and, and it's going to, and then they create, they, they did wicked and they yeah. turned yeah. it all around, didn't they? Yeah. They turned yeah. it around so that the, the wicked witch is not actually the wicked witch. Mm. She's actually the kind one. And she's different because she's green. She looks different. And, mm -hmm. and in a way, it's kind of saying to you, there's always these gray bits. Yeah. It's never black or white or, you know, it's never extreme. There's always the bits mm -hmm. in the middle. And that's also a really good way where you can help people in life. And I do that with them, you know, Buddhism, finding the bits in the middle. Mm -hmm. So tell us about... What are you going to be doing on Moving on TV, your your program? What would you like your dream program to be? Because, <laughs> you know, you're going to be presenting it. You're going to be hosting it. This is like I'm, I, I want to give people the opportunity to live their dream. So yeah. how are you going to do it? What kind of structure would you like it to have? And just tell us a little bit about that. And I will mute. Um. I think I'm going to, I've got a few different ideas, <laughs> but the one I'm going to go with, with yourself, if that's okay, is um, the Jenga, the Jenga project, because um, that's um, my very latest idea. It's my very latest passion. And that's all about um, people um, maybe just having another look at their lifestyle 
and thinking about some of the areas in their lifestyle that maybe um, aren't making them happy, uh, that is affecting mental health, and just considering alternatives. Um, I'll be putting out some alternatives, discussing some alternatives. I hope that, thank you, I hope that people who are watching the show can also share um, ideas. For example, the lovely lady that you interviewed previously, I can't remember her name, but she was talking about going off grid and, you know, starting a, a new life in Portugal. And there's lots of people that are starting to make that kind of move. I mean, it's no by no means the masses as yet, but gradually more and more people are kind of awakening, for want of a better word, and are sort of seeing, you know, just things for what they are and thinking, why am I doing this, you know? Um, and I'd really like to just have a show around that. And it would be, you know, me just talking about the changes I've made, how I made those changes, how other people could possibly do the same. Um, but I know everybody is very different. Everybody's walking a slightly different path. Um, and that's where my life path guidance comes from. Um, very much not about me telling people what to do, just telling people how I've done it to show them there is a way that you can do things differently. But then they have to then look at their own life and think about how they can make similar changes in their lives with the resources they have where they're at. And hopefully people will start to see that when they're happy, mental health is a, is a positive thing and not a, men, not a negative thing. It's always seen when we say mental health, people always think of it being negative. But mental health is your state of mind in that moment, isn't it? Yeah, it's interesting you say that because the reason I call it Moving on TV and I only added on the mental health a while ago is because to me mental health is just a natural way of being it, it, absolutely it's just the way we're meant to be and i teach by example because I, my recovery is huge and at some point you can read my story I'll tell you more. um but i recovered without medication in a therapeutic community on the nhs and got and completely changed my life and and that's what i teach every single day i come on here totally sane well Again, sanity, uh, when I say it, 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 again, those that tell us we're insane are the ones who are insane. There is no insanity. <laughs> There's no mental illness as far as I'm concerned. 99% of people are just creative beings, light workers, maybe mediums, maybe, you know, they, they are dealing with stuff. And, and you could go into science fiction these days and it goes even deeper. I'm not going to go into it in this program of how deep the mind can be and Absolutely. people may not even be human <laughs> you know mm -hmm. like i like as i say i don't want to go into too much into it um as long as you're using it for the good of yourself and the good of humanity then that's fine by me and mm -hmm. uh, so the jenga project now when i was in the therapeutic community funny enough here's a synchronicity i don't know if i'm getting this right we no that was jenga that was jenga no, Lauren, you're absolutely right. That's why I've called it that. Really? Because of the, the building thing? The, yes. The game. We yes, used to play it. that. Yes. It is. Okay. Yes. So yes. that so it's like building blocks or trying to fit things together before, so they don't collapse, trying to find the best, easiest, gentlest way to pull out that piece. Oh my God, that's such a synchronicity. Perfect. Like that's exactly yeah. why I've called it that because it's it's about seeing the the construct or the structure that we're currently in. But you, each of us, if we want to be happy, if we want to avoid men, negative mental health and stress and ulcers and heart attacks and all these things caused by stress, how we can very gently just remove that piece <laughs> out of the bigger structure. And start to build another little structure somewhere else that suits us, that suits our pockets, that suits our family, that suits the environment. <laughs> Beautiful. And repairs our mental health. That's you know, beautiful. it's not about fighting and petitioning and marches and violence and bullying and trolling. It's not about any of that. It's simply about removing your tiny little piece from the structure and building something that suits yourself somewhere yeah. else. I agree. I think we've got to trust that there is a power greater than ourselves that's pulling down the old system. Yes. And, and we've got to take our pieces with us. 
let's not let them collapse with our piece still in there. Let's just get take our pieces and run. How <laughs> quickly? <laughs> I think yeah. that's what's happening. So people are kind of doing that. And so that's really interesting because I'm so visual now. I can see the game in front of me. Yes. And it, it's such, you see, when a lot of people that I expect will watch this or people that I want to bring on to Moving On TV and to bring on to your program are people that are just going to say, oh, my God, Lauren, Myra, I, I don't know what to do anymore. <laughs> I feel so lost with everything. I've got yeah. this mass in my head with so much problems, so much worry. I can't pay the bills. I can't do this. I can't. Can you tell me what is the first step? So I know what I would say to them because I may be a different approach. But mm -hmm. say someone was watching yes. and we're taking that Jenga project as the basis of how to unravel that first tiny little piece. To me, it would be take five minutes a day to say, to do something you love. That's Amen. what it would do for me. What would it do? Because then, do you agree? Yes. Five minutes when you go, no one can tell me that they don't go to the loo. <laughs> <laughs> All day. Right? I've still got a newborn baby. All go to the loo. <laughs> the Even the most stressed out parents in the world go to the loo. You do. So when you're in the loop, <laughs> you sit there and you take a breath and you think of something that makes you happy. Yes. I think that, that that's really, I'm trying not to be aloof. People know I'm going through hell. People know I've got an eviction notice. I've, I'm on my own living with two cats that I've lost everything. And I'm trying to come from here with the empathy to understand that, to, to know that people are going through hell and not to judge them too much. It's not easy sometimes because I do get a lot of, I can't say the word, you know, coming to me and really, really trying to hurt me in lots of different ways. And because they're trying to push me off my pedestal, I'm not on the pedestal and you should, I shouldn't be on a pedestal. I'm just, the, uh, um, uh, how can I put this? An awake um, earth angel, star seed that came here to teach love and I had to go through a lot of hell to learn it. So, yeah. um, and I'm not aloof. I'm trying to say to you, I, I, I don't know what you're going through, but I do know how it feels when you feel like you can't function. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to let you now talk a little bit more about so what that if that person is watching and I get two regular viewers, every single program and they know i'm so grateful i don't have a clue who they are and i don't really want to know but they watch every single program and i'm so grateful because they're the ones that are keeping moving on tv up and, and they give me a like and as i say i don't know who they are but they're on here for a reason they're on here for a reason and and so i try to give them all the love in the world and to help them get through the day so say they're on here, Myra, and hopefully yes. you can have like millions of people like that. But these are the original people <laughs> that yes. are moving on TV. So, so what would you say to that person that needs to watch moving on TV because they're getting something from it and they're feeling that there's some empathy there for their, their plight and they're literally saying, God, this is the only, if I watch moving on TV, maybe I'll be able to get through the day. Maybe I can breathe. I, again, they may not be. They may be going out there and, and saying I'm terrible, but it doesn't matter. What it's I'm still saying, I think they must be getting something from it. Mm -hmm. So what? how would you approach that? That person that is just literally, and I mean, also you go remember, um, well, you have three autistic children. So you know what I mean here. You have to know, you have to watch your P's and Q's and ABC's up to Z. Everything you say, you can trigger. And I'm probably triggering people by what I'm saying. And, but when you're dealing with people that are very vulnerable yeah. and, they don't, and they're lost and they think, what am I, I don't know what to do anymore. I feel the whole world is coming down on top of me. What mm -hmm. shall I do? And they can't even get themselves to that level of sitting when they go to the loo of literally thinking this is my time so don't knock on the door and come in while I'm in there 
<laughs> or you know, the cat follows you in or whatever. Yeah. I'm, trying, I'm being serious. Yeah, you, know, right. you have to close that door, lock it, or it you know, or have a bath, and nobody comes in while you're in there. Yeah, that's your mm -hmm. space. So what? How would you approach it? Because that will develop their self-esteem, their self-love, and then other things will fall into place. That's how I see it, anyway. But do yeah, you have yeah. any other ideas? I'm going to. Yes, there's. I've got lots of different suggestions, and I will explore them you know, through my show. I just want to say a massive thank you to you. Probably not the right time, but I'm going to say it anyway. A massive thank you to you, Lauren, for, for maintaining this channel, for starting it and for continuing, you know, even through your circumstances. Um, but in answer to your first question, um, what would I say to somebody who is struggling? And um, there's a little, I used, as an English teacher, I used to teach English is one of my main subjects as well as, as physical education. But as an English teacher, I like to give little metaphors or um, stories. And one of the stories I would give is of the, the dog who lies on the mat with um, a thorn in its side. And it will get used to that thorn in its side and it will continue to stay in that position with that thorn in its side um, until it becomes unbearable. Um, so I think my advice to people who have got lots of concerns, lots of stress, lots of worries, I've been there, first of all, is what I will say, so I can completely empathise. Um, but you have to recognise what is the thorn, what is actually the single thing that is making everything else so unbearable what what because if you you really give yourself time like you say even if it's three minutes on the toilet to think about yes my relationship might not be working or my job is terrible or my children are unruly or whatever it is or my health is poor if you stop and think for three minutes you will probably be able to think what is that single thorn that makes everything unbearable and when you decide that it is now unbearable I cannot take this anymore and you make always do the action you make up your mind to have change that is your moment of change it's not hours and hours of life coaching it's not hours and hours of counseling it's the moment you decide you've had enough and you want change because that is when your mindset will shift and things will start to be different for you until mm -hmm. you get to that point your life will stay the same because you you're not ready, you haven't asked for it, you haven't embraced it, you haven't invited it in. You hit the nail on the head. Uh, two things came up for me there. One is that if you sit for the, because what happens is if you're nonstop being triggered and you're not, and things are not working and you can't figure out what's wrong, and then you take that time to sit and uh, you will at some point, if the trigger happens while you're sitting quietly, you'll get it yes you'll get you'll it, it. Um, yeah. you will and, you know, I've coached people lauren who have said oh i don't know i don't know i don't know what it is and i'll say to them i'm going to give you a moment to think about it and always within three minutes they can say it's this or it's that yeah. well a lot yeah exactly and the set because um i broke up my marriage um over a year and a half ago i think we discussed this as well and I am living on my own. <laughs> you know where this is going. I've been living on my own with two cats. And then my husband, ex-husband, comes over and he'll do something. It doesn't matter, but he'll do something innocently or whatever. And it's like, whoosh. Oh, my God. And I'm thinking, what the hell was that? Oh, I know what it is because I've been on my own for so long now. <laughs> I can right. figure out what he did. Why did this affect you? Oh, okay, and and that's it. The minute you create space, mm -hmm. it's amazing. That's how I healed in the therapeutic community. The biggest thing that happened to me, and as I say, I'm in a book called Simply Amazing, and that's my story, chapter eight, mm -hmm. is I they tried to get rid of me four times out of the community because I could yeah. not conform. I was doing my work. I didn't know what they wanted from me. But I had a lot of tough love. And it got to the last one. And they all sat around in a circle. And everyone said why they needed to get rid of me. And I sat there in shock. And I thought, yeah, that's how it was done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I have a big story. <laughs> thank God. Thank God it happened. It was <laughs> like, that was it. It was like, 
that moment where they talk to people and, and uh, quite a few of them said leave lauren alone you're always this and then but the important one was i don't understand it's like a friend somebody i thought who liked me and i think we need to get rid of her and i sat there in shock and i prayed to god and i said please i've done nearly eight months if you kick me out now i'll end up in a an asylum because i can't cope anymore i'm completely and i've done eight months don't kick me out now you know mm. i'd look at i mean i had situations where i was so innocent that i would look at someone that didn't like being complimented in at, the, at that time when i i didn't understand signs coming from people at all and mm. and i told her how beautiful she looked because she had makeup on and she said she would tear my head off so stuff like that so they call it a, a big meeting lauren's upset someone yeah lauren was always upsetting someone because she's so different right she's different running around without shoes on i'm smiling and laughing about it because without her, i wouldn't be here now it was huge i'm alive and i'm functioning but that moment i sat there myra and i thought why does everyone hate me please god keep me here because I, I can't, you, you can't take me out of here. And and that night I went home. They kept me, thank God, because I wouldn't, I don't be alive now. They this was 12 years ago, 11 years ago I left the community. It's totally in the feast. No, no mental health issues. I, I went to bed that night and I had a memory recall. Um, everybody knows it. There's no no uh, secret here. I was uh, sexually abused by the family dentist and um for quite a while my parents didn't understand they were very innocent you know whatever but that was the big thing but the problem was i didn't know that i was blaming me mm -hmm. an 11 year old little girl i i no, never got any love i never got any compassion with it i just get got told not to talk about it just just we don't want to talk about it and mm -hmm. um, eventually when they took me away i got brushed under the carpet and i now i can talk about it, it doesn't I don't feel anything. I've done so much work on it. But the magic that happened, this is my big story. You can watch it in a program called Two Awake Blondes. It's on Moving On TV. Someone interviewed me. Mm -hmm. I grabbed hold of my, of my ex-husband and I said, don't let me go back. And that was the light bulb that I said to my dad, don't let me go back. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I, I, I swear to God, if I swear that I had a massive spiritual awakening, I went back to that community the next day and I felt total peace. I never mm -hmm. felt like that in my life. And I said to them, when they said to me, you're having a laugh with us and they carried on bullying me, I just looked at them and I said, no, I, can you please explain what I do that upsets you? Oh, you cook the rice differently to us. So you walk around, run around without shoes. They put <laughs> me on a silent day and they still bully me. But wow. the magic has happened, Myra. Mm. And I remember the people that used to bully me the worst, they went, they left because they had nothing to do anymore. There was nothing mm -hmm. to do. And I became an elder. And by the time I left, I had a standing ovation because they'd never seen anything like it. Mm -hmm. And so I left the community 11 years ago and I went out and created Moving On Theatre. And I thought it would be easy to, to shout it from the rooftops that I recovered from apparently a serious mental health issue. <laughs> without medication because you're not allowed to have medication and i was completely shut down i wasn't allowed to say it and so eventually i started moving on tv and now i never stopped talking about it <laughs> um, that moment that you said why why are they trying to get rid of me what's going on here i need a common denominator to all my pain and suffering i mm. remember when i went into the community i, I gave a prayer out to god and it, not religious i was born jewish but i'm not religious i just said look you're putting me in here three days a week i'm giving my life up for three days a week they said i had to go in for three days because they said i was completely mad because i believed in angels they said i was schizoid you wouldn't believe the tests they give people yeah wow. completely and and i set a, a prayer to god and i said okay i want a common don denominator here i want to know why my life is such a mess. What's going on? Why do I feel like I can't function anymore? 
And of course, I was so different. I didn't want to sit there talking to people about Britain's Got Talent, the X Factor, <laughs> and, and who's dropping a bomb. Shame and who on you. Yeah. Shame on you. <laughs> I wanted to talk to people Important about things right, right. <laughs> and, and I didn't have a common denominator because I didn't have children. They wouldn't let us adopt for all sorts of reasons, uh, which again, I can't go into on moving on TV. But that moment after eight months, I was crying and taking the space to try and figure out. I was in there for a year and a half. That moment of, of reckoning came and the whole thing fell into place. Mm -hmm. And I got, that was the end of, 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 my, of the mental health that I, issues that I had. I've done that. I've had lots of dark nights of the soul and now I know how to get myself out of it. That's yeah, one of the yeah. things I'm looking for 10 people to practice on to teach them the technique that gets you out of panic within 10 minutes to half an hour. Um, as I say, I have to just sit with it and mm -hmm. feel everything. But I'm looking for 10 people to practice on so that I can eventually earn a living because that's something I still haven't figured out. Is that to earn money? Mm -hmm. <laughs> to earn money. Anyway, so okay, okay. we have, the, so your, the synchronicity here is perfect. We're talking about if you are out there and you cannot figure out what's really going on and you need that book, we called it a light bulb. Mm -hmm. that they will go off in the community. If you stuck for 18 months, you got light bulbs. Mm -hmm. And it was like, oh my God, that's exactly what I needed to hear. Mm -hmm. And hopefully that's what you're going to bring to moving on TV. Uh, I'm bringing it in one way. Hopefully, you're going to bring it in a in, in a bigger way, and hopefully, more people are going to join. Um, because I think a lot of people are fed up with me by now, and they want to see some beautiful, friendly, smiley, extra <laughs> smiley faces. You are. Very, um, We're just coming to support, support you. you. <laughs> I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah, the angel that I was looking for. So I'm really excited about Myra. Um, is there anything you'd like to wrap up the interview with? So it's going to be called the Jenga Project. And guys, I'm not in it. Okay, so it's going to be purely Myra and you. <laughs> Lauren is going to be able to take a breather. So you're going to create, we're going to, I, I thought it would be amazing to do this over the festive season. So we're going to have four programs. So, and each program is going to be repeated nonstop. So mm -hmm. people to watch over and over because I'm on here 24 hours a day uh, not literally I go to bed <laughs> and then I, go back and I work till about 6 a.m 5 a.m in the morning and I, I had about five people on who couldn't sleep and who I was putting on these um uh dancing videos and stuff of me in the in the buttercups where I just um talk about fun and love and I let my inner child play and people oh, were enjoying no. it they were on here and so what I will be doing is I'll create a schedule where we'll have you, you can tell me where you feel as well. We'll talk about it where you feel we should have your program on. And then it will be repeated at say, you know, about probably every day, maybe twice a day um, until we start to grow more and more. But over the Christmas mm -hmm. period, I want to saturate moving on TV yeah, with yeah. as many amazing people like yourself Thank doing you. their own programs so if you know anybody else ideally who could do this voluntarily that would be amazing i know we your star now is different but anyone who can come on and can do this from the heart so that we can grow and grow and grow i'd be very grateful and then it's going to be a lot easier to get grants and sponsorship as well wonderful yes i'll pass on the word I definitely well so it's been amazing to have you on here i can't believe how quickly the hour has gone um, <laughs> Uh, I'll be, hey? be in touch with you with all the ins and outs and outs and in. And then if you could, because I've already seen your little program. Can I just put that on quickly? I think yeah, what yeah, you yeah. sent me, which is beautiful. You did all the illustrations yourself. My son but, did them. Yeah. My son helps me. My daughter helps me. My husband helps me with the editing. Oh, that's fabulous. Okay, so there's a lot of people we'll have to put on the on the credits. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I did. I think it's this one. Let me just very quickly check that it's the right one because of... no, that's me. Oh, that's me. I, at some point, yeah, yeah, 
I've saved it. I've saved it here somewhere, but I'm doing I'm doing all the tech myself at the moment. So, but what I will do is I'll put it on before you start your program. And then what will happen is we'll just have the opening of Moving On TV as like Moving On TV Mental Health Presents, and then your program will come on. That's oh, so oh, exciting. Oh, I'm so oh. looking forward to it. And uh, and then we'll do probably do another few lives, maybe at Christmas. Maybe you could bring the family on. Yeah, I'm sure they'd love to. That would be incredible. What's their names? My husband's what? called Mark. Okay. And then my old daughter is called Antonia. Antonia. My son is called Daniel. And my little one is called Mary Louise. Oh, wow. <laughs> Daniel. Daniel's probably one of my favourite names. Danny Boy. Yeah. Boy. <laughs> That's lovely, Myra. Okay, so, so uh, give my regards. You know, one of the things about Birmingham is that they're very awake. Birmingham is a very awake town. So, a lot oh, of people, that, yeah, yeah, a lot of people there. It's a very good stand up, you know, again, without going into um, what we're saying. Um, but it's amazing to, to, to talk to you. I'm really looking forward to the, the Django project, guys. Yes, the, you know exactly the, what it was. The Django. Yeah. How do you say Jenga? Jenga, the Jenga project. Yes, in Swahili, the Jenga means to build. Okay, yeah, that's well, that's how we'll sell it. The yeah, building yeah. blocks to. Oh. But like I say, just very quickly, that game uh, which we played in the therapeutic community is it's first of all you are joined, so you're not working on your own. Okay, mm -hmm. when you play Jenga. You're working together with a team and you're all trying at the same time to keep it before so it doesn't fall down. Mm -hmm. yeah? so you're working very gently, very slowly, and it's all about tactics. It's so it's a wonderful yeah. building, it's a wonderful name, really. So I, I look forward, guys, we're giving you everything <laughs> from the heart. Absolutely. Do you know how much you have to pay for this? <laughs> Absolutely. They couldn't Everybody. afford it, Lauren. They couldn't afford us. <laughs> There's no way they could afford us because it's not about money. They could That's stand right, here right. and sing a song and they get the same result. It's an energy, isn't it? That's right. All about right. energy. Absolutely. Okay, love to love, love to love, Myra. I'll be in Thank touch you. with you um, tomorrow as um, I'm, I'm very, very tired. Because I've got to get to bed till 6 a.m. Yeah. And, and by then I should have a few more people for you to, to speak to. Yeah, thank you, you very much. So get them to email me. And I want, as I say, we're going to be fluctuating <laughs> over the festive season. You're going to be bombarded by love. <laughs> and that's what it's all about. Amen. Thank Sorry. you so much. Unconditional Great. love. Beautiful souls as many as possible who are going to come on here smiling and giving you everything and that will go on the whole of december probably into january and then we'll see but hopefully we'll be doing really well by then <laughs> by the end of right the thank you so, so much take care lots of Thanks love for having me. love and light bye-bye bye-bye bye-bye
treasures to your heart. Smile, my baby, smile. This is your day. Be the star you are. Be the star you are. Be the star. Hey guys, welcome to Living on TV. I'm Lauren Hope Glory, the proud CEO, and I am so proud of it. You can see it in the background there, Living on TV, bringing the hope and the glory back into your lives. Because when you get the hope, then you can get the glory. But you need to have the hope first. Hope is so important. Right. If you watch the interview with um, Emmanuel, it told us that the most important thing in life is not money. The most important thing is connection between people, community. And if you don't have that community, then it's very difficult to grow. And maybe that's why it's taking so long for me to grow. So I'm calling you onto Moving On TV as we are the community. And if you are a lame duck, someone who has got outrageous beliefs in love and humanity and freedom, you need to be on here with your skills and your talents and everything you've got to offer, because that's why I created it. I created for all of us to be on here together, to express our talents, our love, our compassion, our skills, to tell your story because you are a unique, amazing human being. So this is another little promo for Moving On TV. We are all about mental health. We are all about staying sane daily one day at a time because if you cannot express your talents you cannot get anywhere you will not get anywhere with sanity if you cannot express your skills and your talents and do what you love even for a half an hour a day or 10 minutes a day you, it's very hard for you to stay sane believe me i know and that's why i do what i do i do what i love every single day to the best of my ability and I hope we can grow together. I love you lots. Have a beautiful day. Taking time to love yourself. To be there for you. Self-care and love. Keeping you sane one day at a time. Bringing the hope and the glory back into your life. As you can see. <laughs> Bowing down. <laughs> To the creator, living on TV. <laughs> I love you. You can check out more at wholegloryproductions.com. Bye. Join us. There we go. Welcome to Moving On TV. Do you love animals as much as we do? I just showed you Peace and Ellie, my cat. But if you love animals and you love humans, of course, you're the kind of sponsor that we would be proud to have on board Moving On TV. The only sponsors that we would even think about having on board Moving On TV are sponsors that are enhancing the environment, enhancing life, enhancing humanity. They never use chemicals in any way, shape or form, not in hair products, <laughs> facial products, organic only. That's the only thing that touches this skin. No one guesses my age because I never ever use anything 
but pure organic makeup and products on this beautiful shelf. <laughs> I'm healthy in mind, body, spirits, because I never eat anything if it's got any kind of chemical or if it's not pure. So come on board Moving On TV if you are one of us. If you're starting with a new product that you want to get out there to enhance society, to enhance humanity, to enhance animals. Maybe you're doing a new pet food for animals without chemicals. We will welcome you on here, whoever you are, as long as you love animals and people as much as we do. You can contact me at movingontv1 at gmail.com. 07437532798. Email me. I just said it. <laughs> we are Moving On TV, the new TV station that brings you the hope and the glory. And I am the proud CEO, Lauren Hope Glory, moving on with all of you into a beautiful new world together. I love you. Namaste. Welcome to Moving On TV. Thank you. Bye. Hey guys, my name is Lauren Hell Glory. I'm the CEO of Moving On TV. The anger you display, I really cannot take. Want to break the barriers that you and I would make. They'll always be a part of you down deep inside. In the corners of my heart, you're always on my mind. Wish we were together. Why am I all black and white? Whatever. Anyway, my name's Baba Bert and this is me vlog. Me vlog day one. Stay in sin one day at a time. I'm sorry, I've only got a white towel. I'm at Janie's and I've got a nice new shower cap. Bye. Bye. to touch your love but emptiness is here. Wish that you were here again. You'll always be there. Needs now, what the world needs now is love. In the light language. So you don't need to speak any language except the language of love. love.